Um, I got very interested in your work because I do think fossil fuels are way past go. So I got very interested in the energy aspect. And I got your app a, a, a month or so ago. And uh, I was just very curious when I got my energy bill this month because um, in October of 2013, the average temperature was 61. And this year it's been 61. But my energy bill was $5 for my house. And um, that's about 15.5%. Uh, less energy usage than it was the past October, and I just was kind of wondering. I mean, that's it's a possible, but it doesn't seem so probable. So I was just curious if you had any thoughts about that, or that was just random. Uh, she's asking about an energy bill being different from one year to the next. I'm using your app. I got your app. Right after using the app, I've never heard this before. I guess it's theoretically possible. Uh, we've had all kinds of strange things happen. Um, but um, that's not a likely event. It's probably a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. Anyone take, take you up on your hundred thousand dollar offer for twice? Yeah. People have asked about. You know, we put out the um, Star Challenge and award a hundred thousand dollars to someone who can bring a device that meets certain criteria, at least one kilowatt of continuous power being put out while it's self-running. No, nobody has surfaced uh, with anything that uh, meets the criteria. Um, and there is still someone we're going back and forth with, but there's been a communication problem because English is not their a, a native language. I'm not sure if the person has something legitimate or not, but the answer to date is that that's still not been claimed. Um, it, I'd be thrilled if someone did claim it, but uh, I do know that there have been some breakthroughs with uh, Rossi with his uh, device in, I think it's in Italy, where he's uh, done some uh, excess heat generation from uh, technology he has, and uh, a scientist, a friend of mine who's a scientist, um, uh, knows uh, someone at the National Security Agency who had told them they have been watching that very carefully, indicating that it does have promise. Now, here's the problem with what Rossi's doing, is that it's a black box. People don't know how it's working. The tests that are being done are by people who don't know the mechanism of action, and so there's been no third party independent reproduction of the effect, which is our, first of all, that's the sine qua non of science. And secondly, it's a, the requirement that we have. So he may in fact have something legitimate, I'm not saying he doesn't, but strategically it's almost certainly going to fail. Because unless it's open source and can be independently investigated and proven by multiple third parties and then recreated by multiple independent third parties, it's almost certainly never going to get out of the gate and survive the attempts to sequester it. Because sequestration of these technologies is very easy to do unless you allow it to go viral. Um, and uh, he's interested in, in monetizing his research, which I understand. And normally you would do that, whether it's an app or a widget or intermittent windshield wiper circuit. A guy became a multimillionaire for inventing that. But unfortunately, the way the world actually works is that you cannot monetize it that way by keeping the technology secret. And uh, if you do, um, it's going to disappear at some point, and probably you with it. But um, it's a very dangerous game, uh, and also one that won't uh, impress the scientific community simply because if people don't have the ability to test what it's doing and independently confirm it, it won't be believed. Um, because the conventional wisdom is you cannot get more energy out than you put in because the whole zero point equations have all been tossed out of conventional physics and mechanical and electrical engineering. Uh, therefore, um, the proof of the pudding's in the eating, and uh, the more you put a black box around your, your technology, uh, the more likely it is it's going to be black shelved at some point, or disappear um, in the future. That was the problem Stan Meyer had. I mean, he had a legitimate technology, but he wanted to patent it, but he didn't want to put the real information in the patent, so he falsified the hertz, the, the, the voltages and, and the, the cycles per second of the circuitry in the patent, which of course rendered the patent useless. 
because it vitiates the patent. You made a claim in a patent, and if you can't recreate the device from what's in the patent, the patent is null and void. So he either had a very bad patent attorney or he overrode the patent attorney's advice and did it secretly. Uh, and what it means is that everyone who's tried to reproduce Stan Meyer's technology from patent have just wasted their money. Uh, now, I know a couple of people who actually worked with Stan Meyer who knew what he actually did, uh, uh, but the point is, is that those guys, was, one was his twin brother who's scared to death because he's convinced Stan Meyer who had this car running on water was killed, and another one um, doesn't want to step forward for his career being damaged as an electronics engineer. So, but, you know, when Stan Meyer died, for all effective purposes, that technology died with him. Um, so that's why I tell people it's not a wise thing to do. If we don't learn from history, we're going to repeat it. And uh, the, the, the other corollary to that is the definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over, expecting a different result. So there's a hundred years of history of these sort of technologies, and there's a certain number of ways. And the, the, this last, the, a few months ago, about six months ago, I did a, uh, a seminar on this issue and went through all the different ways this has happened. And so that's just the nature of the beast. So we need to, we need to change how we are approaching all this.